Hello, everybody. This is Cruise Man, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I've been promising for some time that I'm going to have a video showing you how I do editing with uh, two different cameras. And so I just shot a motor vlog this morning uh, using my two camera setup. I have two GoPro Hero 8s. Uh, one of them you can see here on the screen is mounted to my handlebars, which kind of looks uh, facing backward toward me. Um, but just to briefly give you a little bit of background before I get started, first of all, uh, I want you to know that I'm not a professional video editor. Um, I want you to know a little bit about my setup. I edit on a Macintosh, a uh, iMac, and... I keep all of my video files on an 8 terabyte hard drive. Currently, I have a 24 terabyte uh, RAID drive that should be in uh, shortly because I have quite a few files. But for now, I'm using an 8 terabyte external drive. And I have, I believe I have 16 gigabytes of RAM in this particular um, iMac. I might have 32. I'll have to go up here and look. Let's see. No, I do have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm using uh, operating system uh, Mojave. Not the latest operating system, but it's fairly stable. So I'm just sticking with this one for right now. Now I edit using Final Cut Pro X, which is the latest version of Final Cut Pro. And that is a program or a software from Apple. So today I'm going to take you through just my steps of how I'm going to edit live this Moto Vlog that I shot this morning. And hopefully if you are a Moto Vlogger or if you do editing between two different video files from two different cameras, uh, maybe you'll learn something. Again, I'm not a professional Final Cut Pro X person. Um, I've learned a lot from my friend Don Smith, who is also a Goldwing writer, and he is also a, a professional editor and spent many years as a network cameraman, a freelance cameraman. So he knows a lot more than I do, but I'm going to show you what I know today as best I can. Now, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. I'm going to assume that you already know something about Final Cut Pro because this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use Final Cut Pro. There are many good ones out there on YouTube uh, that will kind of take you through the basics and show you how to get started with Final Cut Pro. I'm going to assume you already know some of that and I'm just going to pretty much talk about the multicam editing the way I do it. May not be the only way to do it. There may be better ways. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So, first of all, on the left-hand side, just to give you some real quick basic overviews, we have our library open, which is my Motovlog 2020 library. And each time I do a Motovlog, I set up what's called an event. So you can see here an event for first Motovlog of 2020. You can see the second one, Keyson Pathblazer. Uh, the third one, 20,000 subscribers, and so on and so forth. So inside each one of these events are all of the video clips and files that I use to create that Motovlog. And then, of course, you also have the project file, uh, which is the edited version of all these clips where you've pulled all of them together and create the video. So I've created a new project called Am I the Only One? Because that's kind of going to be the theme of this video that we're editing today. And once we're finished, you'll be able to go and look at this video in its final format on my YouTube channel. And that gives me an, op an opportunity to say to you, if you're not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button down below. And if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with some new videos. So what I've done here in my list of clips under QuickTime Movie, you can see I already have brought in two video files. 
These are from my forward-facing camera, the one that's mounted on my helmet. And I still have to bring in clips from my other camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my SD card into the back of the iMac. And once the computer reads that card, it brings up this import window here. And you can see here are the two media files or video files that come from the camera that's mounted to the handlebars. So we're going to select both of these clips. And the reason there's two clips is because the GoPro Hero 8 will only allow a media clip up to 11 minutes and 47 seconds in length. Don't ask me why. But at that point, it will end that clip and begin a new clip. So basically, you end up with two separate clips, as you see here. But I'm going to go ahead and import these. I'm importing them over into the Am I the Only One event. Now, I copy my files into my library. Some people choose to copy these files onto a hard drive in a folder and organize their media that way. Uh, I've just always copied them into the library. I'm not really sure what the advantage is one way or the other, uh, but there probably are advantages to the other way. This is just the way I do it. And I leave all of these other things unchecked, so I don't do any of those. And now I'm going to click on the Import button, and it's going to bring those files into my event. Okay, so now uh, Final Cut Pro has imported all of my files. This file and this file, if I can select both of them by holding down the Command key, these are both coming from the camera mounted on the handlebar. Now, if I go over to the Inspector area and click on the little I, you'll notice that the camera name is untitled. Uh, that's just a default name. I want to go ahead and give that a name. I'm just going to call it Cam1. I want these two clips, since they came from the same camera, to have the same name. It's just a little bit of housekeeping that I do, and I think it helps Final Cut uh, assemble the multicam clips a little bit better. So now I'm going to click on the other two video files, and I'm holding the Command key down as I click so I can click multiple items. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to name these two the camera name as Cam2. So now I have Cam1 and Cam2. Now, to create the multi-clips, it's easier if we view these in as a list. Currently, we're viewing these as a film strip. But if I want to view these as a list, we can click on this icon, and now we can see here's our four files. Now, I know because of the way these files are numbered, this one has 10013. The second clip from the same camera is 20013. That's the way the GoPro will name the clips. By the same token, on the other camera, it's 10459 and 20459. First clip has a 1, the second clip starts with a 2. But I'm interested in these two clips to start out, because this is how we're going to tell Final Cut Pro to combine these clips into one what's called a multicam clip. Okay, so if I select this clip up here, if you look closely, you'll see there is a, a little line. That's actually the playhead, that little red line. Now, I'm going to play through this clip just a little bit so you can see what I do. I'm just playing a little bit of me putting my gloves on. Uh, here in just a second, I'll be backing out of the garage. Now, when I get ready to start uh, the clip, I use a hand clap, and I'm going to use the clap of those hands to synchronize these clips. You see, I just turned on the bike, and I want to make sure both cameras can see what I'm doing here. So I kind of aim my camera on my helmet toward my handlebar camera, 
and then I'll clap my hands. Okay, I'm going to press the space bar to pause the video right there. Now, the reason we do the hand clap, it's visible on both cameras and it's also audible. The microphones of both cameras also will pick up that clap. So I have both an audio and a visual indication of a starting point. And I'm going to instruct Final Cut Pro to use the clap of those hands as where I want it to synchronize these, these clips from. Now I can use the uh, little arrow keys on my keyboard to step forward or backward through this clip one frame at a time. You can see I'm just tapping and it's going back one frame at a time. And I want to capture the frame where those hands first come together and I can first hear that clap right there. Okay, that's where the hands come together. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a marker on this clip. And the way I do that is I press the M key on the keyboard. Now, when I do that, you'll notice a small blue box appears in that upper clip. And that is my marker. That's the point at which my hands come together. Now, what I need to do is I need to set a marker on my second camera. Let's come down here to 20013. I'm sorry. This one right here, 10459. Now, rather than play through that whole first part of the video to get to the hand clap, I can actually see a little bit of the audio wave underneath the video clip right here. I'm just going to click right there because I know that's pretty close to where the hand clap's going to be because I can see the spike in the audio. Now I'm going to press the play button or the uh, space bar. Okay, there's my hand clap on the second camera. I'm going to step through these a frame at a time. Hands are apart. Now I'm going to go forward. Hands are together. That's where I'm going to mark my second video. So I'm going to hit the M key on the keyboard. Now I have a marker. So Here's my first clip from the handlebar camera, my second clip from the camera on my helmet, and both of them now have a marker. Okay, let me just go back to the, uh, I'm going to go back to the thumbnail view right here, and even in the thumbnail view, you can still see those little blue markers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm just going to click and drag, and I'm going to select all of these clips. I could also, if I click off, it deselects them. I could also simply hold down the command key and click on each one of the clips. What I want to do is I want to make sure I have all four of these clips selected. And then I'm going to right mouse click on any one of these clips. Right mouse click and I'm going to pull down to new multicam clip. Now, when I do that, I'm going to give it a name, and I'm just going to call it MC01. That's just what I always name my multicam clips. You can put any name on there you want. The angle assembly, and I should, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about angles in a minute. But, for example, the video that comes from camera one, Final Cut Pro refers to that as an angle. The video that comes from camera two, it refers to as a second angle. So you have angle one, angle two in this case. If you had four cameras, you'd have four different angles. But we only have two cameras. So I'm going to do an automatic angle assembly. The angle clip ordering is time code. Now the reason I'm using time code is because I actually have video from two cameras, but it's split up among four different clips. So Final Cut Pro will be able to identify those two clips from camera one, and based on the time code, it will know which one that goes first and how to organize all this. And it's, synch it's told to synchronize these clips based the first marker on the angle. 
So it looks at the first marker on this angle, on the first set of clips, and it looks at the marker on the second set of clips or angles. And that's basically it. I'm going to use 29.97. You could also do 30p if you want to. I just leave it at 29.97, and it's at 1080p. All the other settings I leave alone, and I'm going to click OK. And now Final Cut Pro, very quickly, by the way, goes out there and creates what's called a multicam clip. And you can see that down here, MC01. If I double click on it, it will show me what is inside of that multicam clip. You can see here, there's the first clip for the first angle. There's the second clip for the first angle. And it's seamless. You won't notice any jump between where it puts those clips together. And here is our second angle down below, Cam 2. And it again, you see all four of those clips are included in the multicam clip. But we're not going to actually do any editing in this portion, in this uh, portion of the timeline. Now, you could use this area to do color correction uh, if you wanted to uh, and some other things, but we're not going to get into that in this video. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a project. So I'm going to select my event and select New Project. And I'm going to give this project a name. Am I the only one? Which is basically the same name as the event. But that's going to ultimately be the name of my video. And you can see just pretty much standard settings, 1080p. Now it creates another file type up here. This is a project. And a project is where we're going to assemble all of our edited clips to create our video. I want to stop here for just a second and let you know that my YouTube channel is supported by advertising. And I will take a break periodically to let an ad run. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, when you see these ads, I appreciate uh, you watching the video and supporting the channel. But it's these ads that kind of make it, make, make it possible for me to create these videos. So when we come back, I'm going to show you how to start assembling this multicam clip on your timeline. So welcome back to our multicam editing video in Final Cut Pro X. Uh, in the previous section, I had just created my project, which is what you now see in the timeline window. And it's empty right now because we haven't placed anything in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my multicam clip that we created. I'm just going to drag it down into the timeline. Now, you can only visually see through the viewer uh, the image coming from the handlebar mounted camera. You can only see one angle at a time. And that's because when you're watching television or you're watching YouTube or any video, you're really only able to see one image from one camera at a time, unless you did, a, did some sort of a split screen. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to start after my hand clap, and you can notice down here, we're not seeing very much audio. There, You see a little spike down there. And I can make this a little bit larger so it might be easier for you to see. You can adjust the size of this clip and also the size of the audio wave. So there you can kind of see that little spike. That's the hand clap right there. Now, and just so you know, this hand clap that we do, this is very similar if you've watched movies where they use the little clapper board. That's why they're using that clapper board is because it's synchronizing their audio with their video. Now, what I want to do is I want to change what audio, because right now I'm getting the audio from the handlebar camera. I'm getting the video and the audio from the handlebar camera. And I'll play a little part of this and you'll see why I don't want to use this audio. So you can see the sound is very muffled, and that's because 
the microphone is on the handlebars. You can, all you can really hear is engine noise. On my helmet mounted camera, I have a lavalier microphone connected into the GoPro to record my voice. And that's the audio that I want to hear throughout this clip. But the first thing I have to do is I have to be able to see both angles so that I know how to edit my video. So what we have to do is go up here to the view menu and pull down to angles because right now we're only looking at one angle. So if we pull down to angles, now we get another window on the left hand side. And now I can see the view coming from the handlebar camera as well as the camera mounted on my helmet. Now up above this window, there are three icons and they're very small. But one of them is an indication of audio and video. One is an indication of just video. And one of them is an indication of just audio. And these icons allow you to tell Final Cut Pro what you want to do next. So if I wanted to alter what audio I'm listening to, and I want to change that, I'm going to click this audio icon. Let's put our playhead over here, kind of near the hand clap. And I've already told Final Cut, I want the next thing I want to do is change just the audio. So now I'm going to click on the clip that has the audio that I want. So when I click on that, you'll see the audio wave and the audio image down below the video changed. So now let's play through some of this audio and you'll hear the difference. Good morning, everybody. This is Cruise Man. Okay, so now we're getting the audio coming through the helmet camera, which is what I want. And I'm going to want that throughout the entire video. But now the next thing I want to change from now on, all I'm going to want to change is the video. I want to leave the audio the same. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to select this icon, which is video. That tells Final Cut Pro that anything I do in here between my two angles from this point forward is simply going to change the visual view. So for example, I'm currently looking at the angle from the handlebar camera or cam one. Let's play a section of that. Good morning, everybody. This is Cruise Man. I'm just getting ready to. Now let's say right here, I wanted to switch to camera two. All I have to do is click here. And now I'm going to see video from camera two, but my audio is not going to change because I told Final Cut from now on, all I want to do is change video. Do a uh, little motor vlog here. It's a so let's go back a little bit. I'm going to move my playhead before that switch, and you'll see now how this works. And you'll also notice a little dotted line, like a blade cut in the video. Just getting ready to do a uh, little motor vlog here. It's a Okay, so now, now you see how you can actually cut video between the two angles. All you have to do as you play through this video is simply decide where you want to see what's coming through each camera. Now I'm going to let this go for a little bit and I'll explain why I cut where I cut. It's a beautiful Saturday morning once again here in Carrollton, Texas. A little bit of breeze today. Now I'm leaving it on this particular angle because right now I'm talking about the weather. I'm talking about what kind of day it is. And rather than having the viewer just look at my face, I want them to kind of see the trees. And if there's any wind, they could see the trees blowing. They can see the blue sky. That's why I'm leaving this angle on right at this moment. Just sitting in my driveway. Wanted to, I'm using this uh, motor vlog as a video. Now I'm going to back this up and I want to change my angle because now you can kind of see I'm tilting my head a little bit, which could be kind of distracting. And anytime I start kind of tilting my head, 
I usually try to go back to the view and I'm just holding down the left arrow key to step backward through this video. So right here, I want to change back to the helmet view. Or actually, it's the handlebar angle. So let's play this now. I'm using this uh, motor vlog as a video that I will also be, uh, it'll be the basis of another video that I'm doing to show how to do. So I'm going to go through this video and I'm going to continue to cut back and forth between different segments. And then I'm going to come back after the break and I'm going to tell you why I cut them where I did. Welcome back. And as I'm editing my multicam clip, uh, during the break, I was just kind of playing through some of this video at the very beginning. And there's a big section here I really don't think I want to include in the motor vlog. Uh, I go through some where I'm trying to, I'm kind of explaining about the hand clap. And I'm also talking about the Garmin Zumo XT. Now, some of that video I might use uh, in my Garmin Zumo XT review, but I don't really need it in this Moto vlog. So I'll play the clip for you, and I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to basically just cut out all together. In that, in that video, I'm also using this video uh, as part of my review of this new Garmin uh, Zumo XT. And in my Garmin Zumo uh, review video, I showed how it was easy to import routes into the Zumo. So you can see I'm spending a lot of time here talking about this Garmin Zumo XT. And I really don't even want that. And this where my blade tool is right now. I hit the B key, I get the blade tool, is where I first start talking about that Zumo XT. So I'm just going to make a, a blade cut right there. And then I'm going to get up here to the end where I stop talking about this Garmin Zumo XT and I'll enter another blade cut and I'm just going to eliminate that entire section from the video. That when we first turn on, basically asking and this and I'll so I'm not going to use any of this video in my motor vlog. I can kind of you'll notice as I move my uh, mouse left to right, even with the blade tool selected, I can kind of skim through the video very rapidly. And I can tell from the video kind of where I stopped talking about the GPS. It's actually quite a bit. So there's a lot of video here that I'm not going to use in my motor vlog. So let's see what I'm at here. A high level. But you can see the difference in the map and here if you can see that through the gopro i'm not sure so anyway i got a few things i want to talk about okay that's a good stopping place for me so i'm just going to cut this right here using the blade tool and now i'm going to go back to the a key on the keyboard gives me my arrow back and i'm going to select that entire chunk of video and i'm just going to hit the delete key i just want to get rid of it so now we're going to go from here in that video. So anyway, i got a few things I want to talk about today. Now, here's a technique where I'm going to show you how you jump from one uh, section to the next like this without the viewer really knowing what's going on. If you, you saw on the screen there, if I jump from here to here, there's a noticeable difference because I've moved my head. I've made some changes to the to the to the angle so let's play right it again that video so we see how it jumps right there well that may that's an obvious cut from one scene to the next so to kind of hide that and to kind of trick the viewer into thinking that i intended to do what i'm doing i'm going to put my playhead right there on that cut and i'm just going to change my angle and go back to my head so now when we play it, it won't be so noticeable that I jumped from, that I took out an entire section of the video. Let's play through it again now. Explain that in that video. So anyway, got a few things I want to talk about today. You see how that works. It's just a much smoother, much easier way to, sh to go from one scene to the next. Um, this is, I think, day 39 or 40 of the uh, shutdown. 
and uh, we're going to go take a little ride here on this beautiful Saturday morning. Now I'm leaving the angle on my helmet because as I come to the end of my driveway, you'll notice if you look up here in the little angle viewer, you might say, you'll see I'm turning my head left to right because I'm checking for traffic. And that can be pretty distracting when you see the head bobbing around a lot when you're looking out through the camera on the helmet. So I'll just go ahead and leave this angle where you're looking at my head. It's better to look at my head going left and right than watch a camera go from left to right. Fortunately, in Texas, now once I get going straight and my head is in a pretty good position, pretty consistent position, now I'll change my angle to the helmet cam. Uh, there is no rule against getting out and riding your motorcycle like apparently there is in some states. Now you'll also notice as I'm riding, it's pretty early in the morning, and there's a lot of sun at my back. I'm very backlit. It's hard to see in the angle viewer right now because they're very small thumbnails. I'd prefer to keep as much of the view going forward like, I, like we have right now because we're getting better uh, color, better contrast. Uh, if I switch back to the helmet view like here, you can see I'm pretty backlit. Uh, it's almost hard to see my face. It's like I'm in a shadow. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to keep this view or this angle uh, until we get to the end of the street. So, and we've had some pretty good weather. We've actually had uh, some decent weather the last couple of weeks. When it's not raining, the weather's pretty nice. It's a little cool this morning. It's about 60, I'd say it's probably about 61 degrees, 62 degrees. Now, when I start getting to, you'll notice I'm about to pull my face shield down. A lot of times, that kind of action I want people to see. So I'm going to back up a few frames here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my angle just for a little bit right here. And then they'll be able to see that I'm pulling my face shield down. And it's one of those mornings where... 61 degrees feels like 55 degrees, so it's a little cool, but it's nice. Now, as I make the turn, I'm going to switch my angle again right in the middle of the turn. I love it. Just tooling through the neighborhood. Now, sometimes... Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when I'm motor vlogging, I'm just drifting. I'm, I'm not... Now I'm going to switch back to a helmet shot again because the color and contrast is pretty good right now. I don't have that bright sun right behind me. I'm not really uh, planning what I'm going to say, but sometimes I make some notes and I tape them to my uh, gas, gas cap lid, as you can see here. Okay, now you'll notice I looked down because I was wanting to show the notes that I have taped to my gas lid, my gas cap. So I want to show that in the video. So I'm going to back up here just a little bit. And I'll switch back just for a little bit so you can see that. Gas cap lid, as you can see here. Because there's a few things I want to make sure I talk about. Okay, so let me replay those last few seconds for you. Because I'm talking about that I take notes and I put them on my gas cap lid. To my uh, gas gas cap lid as you can see here because there's a few things I want to make sure I talk about and so I just kind of refer to those notes okay so now I'm just switching I don't have back and forth no particular reason um, I'm basically just trying to break up the video if the viewer is looking for more than 10 or 15 seconds at the same thing. It gets real boring. Mine tends to wander. And actually, it's more like three or four seconds. If, you, if you'll if you start watching television programmings, television shows, movies, you'll notice they never stay on the same angle or the same scene for more than just a few seconds. 
uh, they're either zooming in or zooming out, or they're a wide angle or a tight shot or something like that. Well, we don't have that many tools to work with when you're doing a moto vlog. Obviously, you have only got two cameras. So I'm just trying to break it up visually as much as possible so that we're maintaining the, uh, the viewer's interest. Turned on right now. So I'm not getting directions from the GPS through the headset. I'll just not in any hurry to do that right now. Okay, so I'm going to go through this entire video. And I'm going to continue uh, to cut it up as I'm doing changing between angles. That's how we edit with a multicam clip. So now let's just play. It's about, I'm not just going to play about a minute. You'll see kind of what we're looking at here. I'm just going to start at this point right here. Wanted to. I'm using this uh, motor vlog as a video that I will also be. Uh, It'll be the basis of another video that I'm doing to show how to do multi-cam editing in Final Cut Pro X. So the other thing I want to show you is how we can drop in B-roll on top of this timeline. And I've got a few elements that I use in all of my Moto Vlogs. In fact, what I did is I have an event in my library called B-roll. And you can see right here, and these are just a bunch of different clips that I use on a regular basis. I even created a little template project that if I double click on it, I've assembled some of these things that I use all the time. One of them is my intro, which I'm sure most of you have probably seen. Uh, a couple of lower thirds and different things, different titles. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of these and I'm going to copy these to the clipboard. And I'm going to go back to my project that we're working on. And I'm just going to paste these in, Command-V, right in the front of the timeline. And then as I need these pieces, I can drag them over on top of my main clip. Here is my little cruise man lower third. I'm going to click that. I'm going to drag it up. And I'm just going to drop it right over here. Because this is usually where I introduce myself at the very first of the video. So let's play it now. Good morning everybody. This is Cruise Man. I'm just getting ready to do a uh, little motor vlog here. Okay, so you see how that works. And I have other things here like my little subscription uh, lower third. If we click it right here, you'll see how that works. I can put this anywhere. I just drag it. And whatever is above my main magnetic timeline, uh, it will overlay it. So it will show up on top. Of course, to synchronize the uh, video from the two cameras, I'll explain that in that video. So anyway, got a few things. So this is how we can add other elements, other uh, things to our video. So. I hope this gives you a little bit of information on multicam editing. Obviously, I've got a little more work to do on this video. I'm going to have to bring my intro in and do some other things, but those are subjects for another day, another time. If you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon. And I will see you next time on Cruise Man's Garage. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.